Shalom, family. Shalom. I'm coming to you guys today to talk about the ripple effect. Now, earlier today, um, I was sitting here thinking, and you know, I was just like, you know, it's hard trying to reach people. We only reach a few people. I'm like, we only reach a few people. And I'm like, I've reached somebody. I'm not going to say names or anything. And I was just sitting here thinking about that one person I reached. And I said, just reaching one person is, um, you know, good enough for me. And a download came and said that one person you reached is going to reach somebody else. And that person is going to reach somebody else and reach somebody else. And everybody's going to reach somebody. And I said... It's a ripple effect. It's a ripple effect. Now, I started talking to you guys about the electromagnetic field in the fourth dimension. Now, we're going to talk about the ripple effect. So, this is a book called The Metaphysics Secrets for Health, Success, and Life. Now, I'm going to start on this page. Okay, well, let's start at the, right here on this page. So, it's the ores and the electron theory. And we've been talking about ores and electromagnetic field. And now we're going to talk about how it ties into the ripple effect. So let's say the electron theory based on the atomic structure of all things is a model of the microscope, microscopic universe. I like to refer to this initial point to understand how the psychic energy field about us operates and how we as individuals and groups in the physical world can influence this field. Now, if you've watched the previous videos, then you're caught up on what the metaphysical, I mean, what the electromagnetic field is, what it's capable of, etc. I can't go back into those things because those were long videos. <laughs> so... The electron theory works on a simple premise that each atom is composed of small particles called electrons, which rotate about a core called the nucleus. The electrons can be kicked out of their orbit and move when an external force is exerted on them. The force to move electrons can be induced by the use of chemical reaction as in a battery or by a physical mechanical energy, such, such as is exerted on a generator once these electrons are flowing it is said that we have electricity as the atoms are the building blocks of the universe and we know we are god's laborers we are his building blocks in the messiah is the cornerstone all matter is composed of atoms as a common element this means that if we can mentally induce thoughts to affect the electrons in ourselves or any other element in the universe, we can then mentally influence how the physical world and events around us are shaped. This powerful idea means that the very thought any of us has in our head at this moment can be rippling out through the universe as rings on the surface of a pond caused by dropping in a pebble. These rings make an ever-expanding circular ripple in the water that will grow until eventually passes over the whole pond, touching the entire shoreline. This is so crazy. My son said he had a dream about a beach, but he said it was a plane crashing. But I don't know. I've been hearing stuff lately about beach beaches. This means that psychic impressions of the future can come from the ripples of the energy that people expel today. Now, guys, oh, my God, this is so exciting because if you've watched the video I did on the 144, I mean, the 4400, this is what the show is about. They was abducted, brought back in a different time to change the past. They were they were abducted. So they can go back and change the past. If you guys go watch my video about the 4400. And in the video they were talking about the war for the future will be in the past. And this is why everybody wanted to keep coming back to the past to try to change the future. Because the world ended in chaos. And it was nothing and just dead bodies. They were saying on top of dead bodies. So, so it's crazy that this says this means that psychic impressions of the future can come from the ripples of the energy that people expel today 
because by when you first drop the rock, it got to go across the whole pond. But we don't know how long it takes. So it may take years. So it affects the future still. Oh my goodness, this is so extreme. We live in the physical world, but the real connections that we have are on the atomic electron energy level. Through this energy, we are connected to everyone and everything in the entire universe. Just imagine all the people that you are in contact with every day share the same energy field that you do. If they are carrying energy of ill intent with them, your contact with them will pick up some of that energy and it will automatically blend with yours. This will this result will be that you can carry around a bad feeling or attitude that you have received from another individual that you interacted with. This natural energy mix is shown in figure 7.6. So we can see and we know that somebody's electromagnetic field can affect you up to five feet away. If you've been watching the previous videos. So say, how does this compare with our personal aura? If we live in an electric sea, then it follows that our personal aura is an electric field generated or controlled by our physical body. With this in mind, it is possible to use our bodies to control our auras as a psychic tool to direct and use psychic energy as easily as a kitchen appliance uses electricity to cook food. If the electron theory holds true, then it follows that our bodies simply control electrons to create and manage our auras. Now, this got me thinking the spirits can communicate through electricity. I think that's why we get messages on our phones. And I got a phone call. Look, 88 at the bottom of the page. I seen 88 today when I was driving home. I've been seeing 88. So, um... I think they can um, communicate the most high in the spirit through electricity lights. I think that's why the lights flicker sometimes. Um, you know, just electricity, the messages on our phones, etc. The messages that, you know, the creepy weird voicemails, the etc. So, so it's say. Auras and spirit. A spirit has no aura because it has no way of controlling the electron energy field in which we live. This is a really important point to remember in the case of, of haunting. In a haunting, some people experience what they think is the effect of energy from beyond. Oh, that's what I just said. So maybe I need to slow my roll. Let's hear what they got to say. In the same exact circumstances, other people experience nothing. This has very little to do with the spirits or the great beyond. The only thing that a spirit can do is to influence the thoughts of a person to create the scary circumstances that are related to a haunting. A spirit may be wishing only to communicate with the living person, but fear in that living person or what they sense can manifest the haunting effect. A spirit has absolutely no power in the physical world except that which we give it. That's why I keep telling people the devil don't have no power over me, okay? But no. <laughs> Persons who are afflicted, which, and I think that's why the scripture said, that he who let it, I don't know, I gotta go read that again. Spirit has absolutely no power in the physical world except that which we give it. Persons who are afflicted with mental disease or are plagued with spirits may only be persons that can control their personal energy field and leave it as a playground for discarnate entities to use or abuse. Mediums well understand that a spirit cannot affect them. Mediums are trained in personal energy management, which is which in a quiet place to cleanse your aura by this method to revitalize yourself. So that's the aura cleansing technique. We don't really got to read that. It says... Our energy management, our personal energy comes from a number of elements to exist in the physical world. We require external energy input. This input is broken into basically three energy sources, air, food, and universal energy. With the balance of our external energy input, we can live a healthy life. Deprivation over overindulgence of these elements can lead to health problems and in some cases death. The energy inputs are required for life and also required for the ability to do things that we wish to achieve. But basically, we got the point. Um, we don't got to keep reading this, but I guess we can. 
I wish I was on live because I want to ask y'all, do y'all want me to keep reading this? That's what I almost just said. The most basic source of energy is the air about us. Without the air, we would lack oxygen and as a result, cannot survive. Yoga masters as the East believe that other than oxygen, the air we breathe contains a subtle energy called prana. To extract this prana from the air about us, we can use the same breathing exercises used by the mystics. And this is what I was talking to you guys about in the last video, the breathing exercise. You're supposed to breathe in through your nose, out through your mouth. Um, you know, so it's say the same breathing exercise used by the mystics. Prana can be used to re-energize your body, collect additional personal energy, and use universal psychic energy for healing. The following exercise can be used to extract pranic energy from the air about us. This exercise can be done standing or sitting with your eyes open or shut. It can be done quickly and easily anywhere. And I have problems with my gallbladder and, you know, I'll be throwing up and you, that's the only thing to help me. It's like the breathing. Before I learned how the breathing, some I would be feeling like I was going to die sometimes. When you're called the ambulance so many times, like, <clears throat> y'all don't want to know what my doctor bills look like. <laughs> so I say, we live in a field of energy, whether we consciously draw upon universal energy or not. We still use it. It is a known fact that space travel out of the Earth's energy field results in a number of health effects. I would like to suggest that coexistence with the Earth's energy field is a natural symbiotic relationship which is vital to our physical existence. The various energy elements have been discussed in earlier chapters. We draw in and use universal psychic energy as a component that is vital to our existence. Some techniques of gathering and using this energy will be covered in sub- okay. So I think we're going to stop there, y'all, because it's starting to go on the other stuff that we haven't read about. I really just wanted to point out the ripple effect. So <clears throat> that's, that's, um, wisdom of the heart, because that's what I was been talking about. Now I got the message today about the ripple effect. So let's see what this say. Stillness is the doorway to all that is within you. Oh my God, that's what I've been saying all in my video. What is, what is, um, why is love the most important thing? Why is the heart area the most important area? Okay. So hold on, guys. Look, this just got deep. Wisdom of the heart. Oh my God, if you guys go to that video, the word... Well, I think it's the next video after that. The word is wisdom. Oh, my God. Let me see if I can find that. This is just too much. This is too deep. Okay, I was talking to my sister, Wakefulness Theology. So, let me get off of that. Um, Let me go to my page. Is it on this one? I don't know Serious? This one. No, I don't think it's this one, but this one was a service. I, it it got to be on this one. Yeah, I think it's on this one. It was 2451, 2452. Both of the words was wisdom. So all of these words is like what I've been getting. So let's really read this. Wisdom of the heart church is a spiritual entity out of which UMS grew Oh, this must be something. Okay, I say, um, this is a church. Okay, I say, I guess I'm going to have to look at this on my own time. We are not separate from God. We are God experiencing life. Present moment awareness is how we experience God. Present moment awareness is experience and still clear open mind. So it's a um, present moment awareness is experienced in a still, clear, open mind. We are co-creators of our collective experience. 
um, experience of reality is subjective and based on perception. Perception is based on beliefs, thoughts, and emotions. Beliefs, thoughts, and emotions are based on the past. Present awareness is the key to experiencing heaven here and now. This is what I keep explaining. The kingdom of God is within you. There is no past, present, future. There is only infinite awareness. We all have free will to perceive and experience any reality we focus on. We are infinite. Creating a ripple effect. OMG, I'm going to have to screenshot this because this is... This, this is not a coincidence. This is not a coincidence. Oh, Lord, she crying. She got in something. So, Wisdom of the Heart Church is a 501c registered as a nonprofit corporation in both California, Minnesota, and Minnesota, USA. Through UMS, Wisdom of the Heart Church is able to offer metaphysical teachings to all people. I don't know why we ended up here, y'all. But I screenshotted it to go back and look at it. But let's get back to the lesson because we didn't get um we didn't get off of what we were talking about. So the first thing was the metaphysics of the heart. So we talked about the first thing, which was the okay, guys. So let me hurry up and finish this video so I can get this food off the stove so we started with member 4d and i was just telling oh my goodness i was just telling my sister wakefulness theology sister paula that um the heart was 4d and now i'm got the ripple effect this morning which is 5d and i already said that i was going to talk about 5d next so it's like i'm just already being led to it and say, have you ever thrown a giant rock into the water and watched it create a big splash, which quickly faded out? But what happened when you threw smaller stones into a di different areas of the pond? You created ripples that created more ripples that lasted for a very long time. That's the ripple effect. Seemingly small or simple actions that affect others that affect others and continue a positive ripple in a profound widespread and sustainable fashion. Apparently, humans respond the same way that the water does. As we have seen in the days following major events like the recent devastating earthquakes in Japan and Haiti, the incidents of September 11, 2001, etc., people's mass intentions and focused uh, or collateral of efforts around the globe do create differences in attitude, frequency, and actions that are measurable even by satellites in space. They is watching our actions, y'all. We got to keep our actions in check. They want you to act a certain way so that they can harvest your energy. Mm -mm -mm. So let's say, um, unfortunately, the effects are not permanent. And within days, weeks, or months, we return to frequency levels, attitudes, actions, and circumstances as they were prior to those events, if not worse. However, history has shown that the ripple effect is successful in spreading a philosophy, shifting paradigms, and changing frequencies, but permanently and globally. Okay. And it says, if it was holy apostles who, who scattered to spread the word of Christianity, Christianity, which was the only new religion of its time that actually stuck, today's light workers... First waivers, and this, I hope my sister Wakefulness Theology watched this because she was talking about the wave, the wave. First waivers or people of high frequency are the modern apostles, not to spread an invented religious construct, but to assist the shift of consciousness that humans in this planet must experience in order to survive and thrive in years ahead. So I say we firmly believe that the world will not end in 2012 and the planet as a whole isn't going to wake up in the fifth dimension, wake up in the fifth dimension anytime soon. With that said, there will be more gradual but crucial awakening and evolving of our world and the people in it as we begin 2013 and through the next century. Although less than 1% of our current global population is innately of higher frequency, those who appear to be spread around the world almost strategically for almost strategically for the times ahead. 
They may not even understand why they are living in a city or nation that seems like an unlikely home for them. And I remember I explained to you guys my address is 222 and I didn't realize that. I didn't really, I guess it wasn't my favorite area, but then I just kind of grew on me. So I say they might not understand why they are living in a city or nation that seems like an unlikely home for them why they work in an office or industry that doesn't fit how they see the world or why they feel so isolated and alone as though like-minded people don't exist or feel worlds away it is our belief that they are the pioneers or beacons scattered around the world and places and among people who will need their insights high frequency and perspectives the most so i guess i'm around people who will need me the most first waivers or light workers each have his or own jurisdiction i'm telling you that's why my name is judge of god like it's in my name dan and then isha means woman dan means judge or god is my judge <clears throat> say whether they assist just one or up to one million people in their network so just one or up to one million people and and though i said i just reached one person and then I got that message that that one person will reach another person. So uh, a family, co-workers, community, or friends, they create and, perp and perpetuate the ripple effect. What they share with the people around them gets passed on by those people to even more people with their own differences, circles, and so on. Thanks to the frequencies and messages that get shared, each person experiences an increase in personal frequencies realizes a connection or oneness with others, adopts a philosophy of service to others, and becomes the example of heart-centered beings. Saving the world doesn't mean having to save the entire world, just your world. That's how we rescue the planet and help the human species evolve the ripple effect. So how do I prepare for my role in the ripple effect? Move forward so that you are in the best place possible, including relationship, health, career, and spiritually. To effectively help others, you have to have gone through difficult, confusing, or painful experiences in order to relate to others. But you also have to know how to grow from those experiences and use them to your benefit, not detriment. If you succeed and walk the walk, Others can and will be more open to your advice, insight, and ways. Take action. While meditating intentions and quiet time have their value in place, we must also participate in our world. Now is the time to reclaim the power. So it says, take action. While meditating intentions and quiet time have their value in place, we must also participate in our world. Now there is time to reclaim the power that we have handed over to the politicians, big businesses, organizations, and the status quo. If we don't like the way they are treating Mother Earth, other humans, animals, and the environment, etc., then we need to take action and raise awareness and or stop them. Ignoring them or willing them away isn't working. Learn to decipher the message from the messenger. There are many people or leaders, even in the metaphysical realm, who have great messages but are not who and how they claim to be. From a certain planet descended from shamans, truly channeling a deity or avatar. So learn to think critically and value the perspective or concept more than the messenger delivering it. Don't be a copy. Okay. Learn to trust yourself and the process okay so i my next video i'm going to end it there y'all because i got to get to my family they keep calling me baby crying kids calling saying mom <laughs> you know so i really but i had to get this out to you guys really quick um i hope you go back and watch the previous videos to get a deeper understanding of the path that i've been going with these videos lately um, I want to give all praise to the Father, to the Holy Spirit, and to our brother Christ, always. And shalom, family, until we meet again.